You walk into McDonald's, you're excited, you're hungry. You look at the cashier, she's about your age or he's about your age and you want to just play this out cool. You order a Big Mac fries and a Coke Zero and your total comes to $13.86. Now you know your bank account has $8.16 in it, but you hope the bank's going to swing the other five bucks and everything will be alright. Put me in overdrafts like I always am and we'll just go on our way. Tap the card and the beads of sweat start coming down the forehead. Usually you're going to use the casual line. Oh my god, my card just worked at the other place. I, I don't know what's going on with it. Deep down, you know, you've used this line many times before. You've used this line many times before. But it's okay, after this video, you'll never have to use that line again. Because these eight things that I stopped purchasing will help you with your Big Mac situation. Number one, the bulk purchasing of food. You go into Costco with the intent to spend $50 and you leave with $400 and the mentality that you saved money. If you weren't planning on buying these items, then you didn't save a dime. When you walked in to buy a piece of broccoli, a box of granola bars and toilet paper, but you left with a TV, an umbrella, and $40 worth of chop suey, you never saved a dime at Costco. And the problem with bulk purchasing is not only does it make you spend more at the store that you're in, but you end up buying things just to believe that you saved money. And then you see them in your pantry months later and you just consume them because they're there. You don't even want the items, but you just consume them because they're there. And the other fact, if you don't consume them, 40% of all the grocery that you buy ends up in the garbage. Just imagine that every single dollar you spend on grocery, 40% of it goes into the garbage. You spend a hundred, forty dollars goes to the garbage. So this is what changed with me. I started only purchasing exactly what I needed. And I know it's different for me because I do have a grocery store now with all the food I could ever want. But when purchasing anything now, I purchase it with intent. If I need it, I'll buy it. And I'm very specific on if I need it, I'll buy it. Number two, your unused subscriptions. Netflix, Hulu, YouTube Red, Disney Plus, your karate online course that you haven't used in 12 months need to go. If you aren't using them once a week, get rid of them. Basically what I did is I went through my monthly statements for the last three, four months and I saw every subscription that was nickel and diming my account. And what's funny about these subscriptions is they go under the radar because they're $6.99, $4.99, the in-app purchases are $1.99 per month, and they go undetected month after month after month. And you're just giving away free money to these people without using their service anymore because it's so undetectable, you let it slide. If something is $300 a month, then trust me, you'll cancel it. But when there's 14 different things at $4.99 a month, majority of them will go unnoticed and you'll move on to the next month, the next month, and the following month. And guess what? They're still charging your account and you're not even using them. Number three, your unused gym memberships. Now, I know it hurts to cancel a gym membership because it kind of feels like you are giving up on yourself. But if you truly have not used this gym membership for six months, 
I'm not saying to stop working out or stop trying, but you have to come to the reality that you are not a person that will go to the gym at this moment. You have to find a different outlet that provides you with the exercise that you will be consistent on. Because at the end of the day, your $70 a month, whether you go to the gym or not, still nickels and dime your, your account, and then you'll never be able to purchase that big bag. Now that is a catch 22 in and of itself, but you won't be able to purchase much of anything if you don't keep track of your expenses in general. So what I did with my gym membership, we were spending about $70 a month on a gym membership. And as you can see, I'm not the most dedicated person to the gym. I try here and there, but I reduced my gym membership to $10 a month and I'm going the exact same amount that I used to go at 60 a month to 10 a month. Other people I've known have strictly bought a pair of dumbbells and work out from home now for free using YouTube or other online resources. And to be honest, your body doesn't know if you're at the gym or at home. As long as you're consistent, you're going to see results without that extra gym membership fee. Number four. A problem that really plagued my finances a few years ago. Impulse online shopping. Whenever I was bored in bed, on the toilet, at the store with nothing to do, waiting for somebody, bored at home, I would grab my phone, open Amazon or Wish, and just start scrolling and seeing what I needed to purchase. And the problem with the word is needed. It's what I wanted to purchase. None of those were necessary and the countless items that showed up at my door, I can tell you that 99% of them I do not use anymore. Don't even know where they are. They're probably stuffed in the garage somewhere because truthfully, everyone's garage nowadays or storage rooms or empty rooms end up becoming a dumping ground for your Amazon purchases. And these items are things that you would never have purchased in store. You're only buying them because they're coming to your door easily and you don't have to do anything to go get them. And simply the overarching factor is you were bored when you bought them. Now I'm not saying there's things you don't need or there's things you shouldn't buy if you really need them to improve your life or start a business or for example a tripod or a ring light for the studio. But at the end of the day what I started doing was this. Anything I ever wanted to buy online I gave it the 36 hour rule. I would put it in a wish list and I would come back to it after 36 hours and if I still really thought I needed to I needed this item then I would consider purchasing it but I stopped purchasing things the first time I saw them online the first time I popped in my head that I needed it I always waited 36 hours and this prevented me honestly from purchasing 90% of the things I didn't need so now that money that I didn't spend on items that sat in my garage can go towards, you know, business ventures, investments, or like I like to spend my money on experience, travel, etc. Number five, the latest trending technology. This is something that I used to be quite bad with where I always needed the latest iPhone or the latest Mac and you can see this one's quite aged right now it's probably over five years old but when you realize that these pieces are literally made to keep absorbing every last dollar that you have you'll realize that the companies are updating things that the common consumer wouldn't even notice from device to device and I'm not saying you know an iPhone 6 is the same as an iPhone 15 but from the 14th to the 15th I promise you go show 80% of the people the different cameras 
and they're not going to be that impressed. The funniest thing that I always find is when people will camp out outside of the Apple store for the release of the new iPhone. They'll spend 24, 36, 48 hours camped out for the latest device. And when you truly realize what your time is worth, you just spent 48 hours on a sidewalk in a tent to purchase an item from another business. And yet in another six months, these same people are lined up to buy the latest and greatest yet again. It's a revolving door of happiness with technology and people will look at me with this Google Pixel and ask me, why do you still have this phone? And I will literally tell them I can do anything I've ever wanted on, the, on this phone. You can do anything you've ever wanted on most phones, but yet the businesses and the geniuses behind this technology and the marketing that goes into convincing you that you need the latest and greatest technology has you in a loop of spending thousands every year on products that are barely updated to the normal consumer. And I know there's gonna be some tech geeks out there that can list off 40 different things that were updated, but for the common person, I promise you the iPhone 13 will do the exact same for you as the iPhone 15. Number six, name brand clothing. You were not a walking advertisement and that this used to be me. From 19 to 24, everything had to be North Face, Gucci, Hugo Boss, all this stuff that was just a waste of money. Just to impress people that I didn't even care about. I never had any money yet I was flaunting name brands like I did. And what did it get me? What was the end result? Did people think I was cool because I was walking around with, you know, North Face or uh, Hugo Boss sweaters or I'm not even sure if these brands are as expensive as I remember them when I was broke. But to be honest with you, name brand clothing doesn't need to be a part of your monthly spending. It doesn't do anything different for you. You will not care. 99.9% .9 of people will not even notice because they're still so focused on making sure that they look cool they walk into a room with the popular brands and they're in their head just like you are. But when you break free and just realize, and you'll notice in most of my videos, I'm wearing a simple t-shirt of the same clothing over and over and over. And yes, I'm not the most stylish person, but when it comes down to it, if you find well-fitting clothes, they will always stand out and look much better than ill-fitting clothes with a name brand. Picture me with a gigantic box t-shirt on, okay, bigger than this. It says, the North Face, right across it, or Lululemon. Do I look cool now? No, get clothing that fits you and it will do much more for you than name branded clothing. Number seven dining out far too often. I'm not saying not to ever go out and enjoy nice meals, first holiday celebrations, birthdays and all that. But I realized by working in a plaza that is surrounded by fast, casual food, takeout food, just how much people tend to grab and go on their dining. When it comes to cooking, it's a lost art. I'm in the grocery element, you know, selling, you know, meat, fruits and vegetables, bread, grocery, things you have to prepare together. And I can tell you around five o'clock at our store, I must see 
500 different people picking up food, take out, rushed, completely stressed out, grabbing food and just, you know, spending that amount of money that could be going to almost, I would say almost a week's worth of grocery, the amount of food that people spend on one meal for their family by dining out. And it's becoming a problem that sneaks up on people because they say, well, you know what, we worked all day, I'm so exhausted, I just want to pick up something quick and bring it home and everyone will be fine and we can just eat tonight like that. But a day goes by and then you do eat at home, but the next day you're like, you know what, it's the weekend, it's Friday, let's grab something, let's all go out to a restaurant. And those bills add up quick. With the food pricing increases that we're seeing and the cost of food in general nowadays, dining out is one of the undercover expenses that people are not seeing. So what I started doing is I make it special when I go out. I make it more of a, a treat to go out. Like Felicia and I will go out once a month to a nice place. We'll order food, we'll order a little bit of extra, we'll try different things. We'll get dessert, a bottle of wine, and it becomes more of a, a treat or an experience rather than eating out every few nights just to get by. And you know, I know you're gonna say, oh Ray, you have a grocery store, it's different, you have all the food you want, of course you don't have to eat out. Even when I had my store, when I was very busy and stressed, we still ate out quite a bit until I made the switch and said, we can't keep doing this, we can't keep wasting money on food because we're too lazy to cook. And that's what it comes down to. You're too lazy to cook and clean up, so you just want to grab food because it's convenient, it's on the way home, you don't even have to get out of the car. You just drive through or skip the dishes and you can start eating. So the convenience, again, is what's killing you. Number eight, home decor. What I used to do is I would see things that were staged in houses that Felicia was showing and I would really like how they set things up in their house, in their studios, and I would have to go out and purchase it. And what ended up happening is we just ended up with more and more cluttered furniture. We were in a two bedroom, one bath house and we kept adding more and more pieces, decor, wall art, you know, coffee table stands, nightstands, side tables, you know, bar stools, and it didn't really make sense anymore because you end up spending money on things that you don't need, that take up space, and that you constantly keep having to update to keep up with the trends. Once I got rid of those things that I didn't need, I realized it not only cleared up our physical space, but our mental space as well, where things just weren't in the way as much and the room just looked more open and it made more sense. And at the end of the day, really realize what you are needing in each room and stick with that. I'm not saying you know live in a dental clinic where everything's very sterile and too simple but pick the exact pieces you want go for something that will last you a while that you don't have to replace because it breaks down because it was cheap and stick to those items because at the end of the day in my store we have so many different shelving, coolers, items, inventory, stands, tables, that I needed a break from all that and I needed to simplify my life. So oftentimes people will come in my house and be like, oh wow, you guys are still moving in? You guys, you know, are still staging this place or what? And it's just because I don't have the same amount of furniture as most people. I have exactly what I need I stopped spending on extras that ended up being dumped in my gar garage after six months because they had to be updated or they took up too much space in the room. 
All right, that is it, guys. Thank you for watching this video. I hope these eight things that I used to purchase that I don't purchase anymore are of value to you and help you on your financial journey.